Hello, welcome to Daily. We're going to read 1 John chapter 2 today, and we're going to pray before we begin reading. God, thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for giving us your word. We're so grateful that we still have it to read today and uh, help us to understand what we're reading and to apply it to our lives in Jesus' name. My dear children, I am writing this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate who pleads our case before the Father. He is Jesus Christ, the one who is truly righteous. He himself is the sacrifice that atones for our sins, and not only our sins, but the sins of all the world. We can be sure that we know him if we obey his commandments. If someone claims, I know God, but doesn't obey God's commandments, that person is a liar and is not living in the truth. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. Those who say they live in God should live, live their lives as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, it is an old one you have had from the very beginning. This old commandment, to love one another, is the same message you heard before. Yet it is also new. Jesus lived the truth of this commandment, and you are also living it. For the darkness is disappearing, and the true light is already shining. If anyone claims, I am living in the light, but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. Anyone who loves a fellow believer is living in the light and does not cause others to stumble. But anyone who hates a fellow believer is still living and walking in darkness. Such a person does not know the way to go, having been blinded by the darkness. I am writing to you who are God's children, because your sins have been forgiven through Jesus. I am writing to you who are mature in the faith, because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I am writing to you who are young in the faith, because you have won your battle with the evil one. I have written to you who are God's children, because you know the Father. I have written to you who are mature in the faith, because you know Christ who existed from the beginning. I have written to you who are young in the faith, because you are strong. God's word lives in your hearts, and you have won your battle with the evil one. Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offer, offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away, along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. Dear children, the last hour is here. You have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and already many such Antichrists have appeared. From this, we know that the last hour has come. These people left our churches, but they never really belonged with us. Otherwise, they would have stayed with us. When they left, it proved that they did not belong with us. But you are not like that, for the Holy One has given you His Spirit, and all of you know the truth. So, that, so I am writing to you not because you don't know the truth, but because you know the difference between truth and lies. And who is a liar? Anyone who says that Jesus is not the Christ. Anyone who denies the Father and the Son is an Antichrist. Anyone who denies the Son doesn't have the Father either. But anyone who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. So you must remain faithful to what you have been taught from the beginning. If you do, you will remain in fellowship with the Son and with the Father. And in this fellowship we enjoy the eternal life he promised us. I am writing these things to warn you about those who want to lead you astray. But you have received the Holy Spirit, and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. And what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. 
so just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. And now, dear children, remain in fellowship with Christ so that when he returns, you will be full of courage and not shrink back from him in shame. Since we know that Christ is righteous, we also know that all who do what is right are God's children. John is going to give us a comparison of where we should love and where we shouldn't love in chapter 2. He starts by saying this in verse 7, I am not writing a new commandment for you. Rather, it's an old one that you've had from the very beginning. This old commandment to love one another is the same message you heard before. I like how he says this. He says, this is not a new commandment that you've heard. And the reason why he's saying is because He literally penned when this commandment was given by Jesus. And when Jesus stated it, it was like a new command that he was getting them to understand. In John 13, 34, as in like the Gospel of John, it says that Jesus said to them, So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Jesus spoke this commandment to the disciples at the beginning, and they've been living this out. He's like, this isn't new. You know this. This is Jesus' principles from the very beginning beginning. And he says in verse 9, if anyone claims I'm living in the light but hates a fellow believer, that person is still living in darkness. He says that this love for our Christian brother and sister, loving one another inside of the church, it's critical in regards to our faith. Now, we take that and he parallels that you should love each other, you should know this, this is an old commandment too, do not love. And he says this in verse 15, Do not love this world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Now, what does he mean when he says, love the world? Some of people are like, well, I I love the world. The world is beautiful. I mean, the earth is terrific. When they say the world in the New Testament, it's used three different ways. The world can mean literally creation, the planet. It can mean the people of the earth. Or it can mean like the system of the earth. Sometimes it talks about how Jesus loved the world. That's like the people of the world. Uh, It talks about the idea that obviously he's the creator of the world, literally the creation itself. But the third one is the one we're talking about here. Of course, we're supposed to love the creation that's around us, enjoy it, it reflects God's beauty. We're supposed to love the world as far as the people and tell them about the gospel. But the system is one that God talks about throughout the the Bible about the fact that it's like in devil's hand, the, the devil's hands, the system of the world is kind of the one controlled by him. We say this sometimes, like the world of sports, the world of finances, is kind of like the entire system around that subject. And the system of this world is controlled by the devil. It says that this world, okay, we're not supposed to love it. Verse 16, it says, the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. He says, here's what the world, the system of this world offers you. And he says, it doesn't come from God. And I like what he says. He says, it offers only this. And this is going to blow your mind as I take you through this. But he says, this is all sin. This is everything the world offers. And he lists out three things, okay? He says, the craving for physical pleasure, or another translation would call it the lust of the flesh, a craving for everything we see, or the lust of the eyes, and then pride in our achievements or possessions, or they would call it the pride of life. That all three are the fullness of what sin is. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the the pride of life. The lust of the flesh, that's pleasure. That's something that feels good. The lust of the eyes is possessions. It's to have something, right? And the pride of life is power. It's to be something, that this is what the world offers us, pleasure, possessions, and power, the opportunity to feel, the opportunity to have, or the opportunity to be. And listen, all sin falls into these three categories. You're like, no, it's not possible that it could all just fall into those three categories. I'm telling you, it all falls into those three categories. The devil will try to use this system and to use one or two of these to draw you in because if you start loving this world, it will give you these things. And these things will convince you to love the world. And he says, this isn't from the Father. 
These things can become the love of your life. They can consume your life. This isn't supposed to consume your life, to have, to be, to feel. You're meant to have this deep love for your brother and sister in Christ, which of course comes from our love of God, our Father. Friends, do you love the world? Do you love the world? Which one of these three, if you're honest with you, which one do you struggle with? Which is the one that lures you in? Is it the lust of the eyes? Is it like the idea of being able to like, you know, have things, possessions? Is it the lust of the flesh, that idea of pleasure, feeling good? Or is it the pride of life, the power to be something important? I want to encourage you to act, okay? Put these three types of sin in your mind. I need you to remember these. Lust of flesh, lust of eyes, pride of life. Or pleasure, possessions, power. And here's what I need you to know is you need to put those in your mind so that when you start to be drawn by one of these, you would recognize this isn't anything special. It's just one of the three. It's one of the three things the devil uses, and it will kind of rob some of the power away from whatever that craving is that's pulling you in. Instead, turn your eyes back to Jesus. Move forward by faith today.